the 20th century. Thank you very much. Now we're going to talk about the image that Leonora Carrington had on the Mexican press. This is an image like it's the other side of the mirror based on what we've just listened to, the narrative image of Leonora Carrington, how literature has worked with her image. It represents a change in paradigm of the 20th century. Are we ready with the presentation now? This transformation starts when Leonora gets to Mexico in 1942, and it is defined as a foreign painter. Even after her death in 2011, the press called her a British, um, uh, a British Mexican painter. Amongst the different manifestations of the configuration of the narrative image of Carrington, one of the closest ones was the art critic from a literary space. She built Critical Fortune for Leonora. Uh, changes are revealed in the cultural mindset of Mexico, the pace at which the cultural um, environment starts uh, embracing the painter, and they started including her in the catalog of Mexican painters. There was a transformation of post-revolutionary traditionalist patterns. In the realm of literature, there were coincidences between the capacity of the spectator finding uh, taste coincidences and the narrative image of Carrington. Her technique and motivation when it came to work to working. The first attempts to narrate what was been looked at came from Seferino Palencia. He made a chronicle of the first solo exhibition of Leonora Carrington in Mexico in a very small gallery that was um, Clara de Cor. It was more of a furniture store than an art gallery. In 1950, Crespo de la Serna wrote a chronicle on her exhibition where it read, Fantasy and Reality, the Expression of Forms. He quali he adjectivized as a memorable happening. There's no description for the physical space of the gallery, but Carrington herself described it in an interview made by Paul and Jelly for Whitney Chadwick's book. M many years passed before a Mexican gallery accepted me, Carrington said. My first uh, solo exhibition in Mexico happened in a furniture store. At this place, I had a collection of, 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 of canvases and some other pieces in, performed in wood and board. And it was a canvas from, 1940, from 1948, Dagobertus King. The definition of the artist proposed by this journalist is important because it shows two characteristic elements of, uh, of his criti critic. The criterion on uh, nationality. He called her a fine British painter. She resides and paints in Mexico. And, uh, so she, he sets her apart from national painters. The second element, her personal style. She is defined as something that separated from the artistic groups of the moment. Her temper are not constrained by a geographic envi random environment. The world where she breathes in is a very wide one. Uh, the misunderstanding standing in Crespo's criticism is evident. Uh, is as it was, uh, there was a barrier between Carrington's work and his optics. Uh, this is a clear example of what Elie Espinosa defines as a bunch of images overlapped on other images through time, configured by different voices. The specialized viewer is one that gives a sense that can incorporate the nature of the artist and her work. This first solo exhibition by Carrington was also uh, also appeared on Novedades newspaper. Seferino Palencia was the critic. On that uh, article, uh, describes her work. A um, strange isolation from what's crudely human. Leonora Carrington lives there, and she's the she's the disseminator of that surrealist trend in Mexico. She expresses emotions with clarity, with crispness and simplicity of a primitive artist. Valencia described Carrington as a different styled like foreign painter, a primitivist painter. 
uh, the artistic product practice of Carrington was done through emotional uh, uh, emo emotional expression. Uh, informational criticism started uh, showing Carrington as a reference vis-a-vis -vis the new painting styles developed in Mexico at the time. Severino Palencia's times were those where the ambivalent, uh, where there was an ambivalent attitude towards what was foreign in, when it came to, to cultural policies. By 1960, the journalist criticism had incorporated Carrington's work to the national um, archives of art, and Mexican critics were more interested about her work. Uh, she answered uh, an interview for Chadwick's book, and uh, the press came closer and she got a lot of publicity. Carrington's work in the public sphere was closely related to different sociocultural events like the emergence of exhibition spaces and the importance of the Mexican figure uh, in public spaces, the integration of foreign art artistic spaces and more representation of academic criticism in reinvention and transformation of the Mexican modern traditions. Raquel Tibol said that Mexico preferred fantastic painting made by feminine hands for the first time, a conjunction between fantasy and surrealism. In the uh, Critical fortune of female artists gained ground because that represented, amongst other artists, the beginning of doubt, of questioning, and a window to other different types of plastic representation, leading to a generation that displaced aesthetic interests. Carrington was part of a sample of Mexican art shown in Paris in, ni in the 1950s at the National Institute of Fine Arts in Bordeaux, Paris, and Milano. And this was a sample of Mexican contemporary aesthetics. Juan Garcia Ponce noticed Carrington work uh, because of a retrospective exhibition in 1960 that took place in Mexico City. We found a truly uh, aesthetic appreciation of Carrington's work. Uh, that action opened up a door to the different possibilities of the world. That is to say, it opened the door to the possibility of having reality vis-a-vis -a, -vis a subject without concepts through endless possibilities. An interest that uh, pleasure, universal validity produced through the faculties of the, as the subject, imagination and understanding, as Kant mentioned. This was an exercise, and as Ana Maria Wash said, uh, the critic is not only an intermediary, but they help to c create opinion nuclei, and this will uh, this turns into a factor of artist production. Po poetry uh, is a result of the gaze of the artist. Some passages of Garcia Ponce's criticism. <laughs> there are some passages that Garcia Ponce used to analyze the traces of, uh, of taste judgment. And this is how it all starts. Life and death, uh, uh, dream, everything is part of one single thing, halves that come together. Leonora Carrington, Mm, uh, focuses everything on individuality. There must be a lack of interest in com in contemplation. Uh, in front of a beautiful object, I'm free. I'm not moved by any subjective motivation. But Garcia Ponce talks about the creativity of the artist. The poet has no fear for mystery. On the contrary, uh, he uses mystery to uh, to get to fundamental truth. Carrington work Carrington's work is 
paralleled to written narration. Octavio Paz wrote an essay on surrealism in 1954, and he says, in essence, imagining is going beyond oneself, is to project our world, is to transcend. Like that, imagination and mystery come together in Carrington's work to uh, get to the representation of immediate reality. Leonora Carrington announces reality through her paintings, and Garcia Ponces talks about an unstable balance game between mind and understanding. Probably it talks about philosophers. Uh, there's a painting that illustrates his art criticism that also makes reference to the freedom of the artist, uh, creating the representation of reality. Octavio Paz also states in an article called Surrealism, it is about the concrete exercise of freedom uh, to put into action the free disposition of man uh, fighting body on body with the normal. Seferino Palencia tried to, uh, to make more formal criticism on Carrington's work. Uh, Garcia Ponce described her in a really refined way, saying her works are composition that uh, where the artist incorporate elements that are um, in common life elements, but they are transformed by reality, and that reveals uh, irony and the inter internal gaze of the artist with some sense of humor. When talking about the painter Garcia Ponce says, Carrington recreates the constant presence of the spectator as a witness of the artist and her work. Paz said, getting to know something is an act that transform that what you know. The poetical activity becomes magic here. Garcia Ponce's criticism finds a cultural image on Leonora Carrington with a clearer uh, quality. Thanks to this man of literature, and the, the, the artist and the work of art are the elements that will make uh, n the narrative image transcendental. That helps to identify Leonora Carrington from a literary perspective. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis this subjectivization, the construction of a narrative image is built. And Juan Garcia Ponce says that it is essential not to force the interpretation of the work of art because it changes all the time. At the same time, both uh, writers appeal to the universality of the judgment of taste and they aim to the enjoyment of the painting. Garcia Ponce says the, effectiv the effectiveness of the plastic language of the painter is pointless because all the elements in Carrington's painting are valuable in themselves. Leonora Carrington has a narrative image that is developed out of the life of the artist. It stems from the narration, and the existence is subjected to the different worlds of representation of the people who are studying her work. A study in 2011 uh, has a permanent construction. It always depends on the spectator, on the one that's looking, on the one that's defining the work of Leonora Carrington. Leonora Carrington from the Mexican culture. Thank you very much.